Hi, this is a tutorial on how to rig a character with Juic in After Effects. Juic is a third party plugin, and I'm gonna post a link how to download and bring Juic here. It's going to be placed right under the window, and you double click and get the window, which is just like this one. It's important to know that there are different types of rigging. One of them I call it stretchy rig. And the reason why is because you can stretch uh, the body parts with this kind of rig. The other rig is a non-stretchy one. And you can see that here we get a more natural bending. Today I'll show you how to make the stretchy rig. And probably I'll have another tutorial to show you how to make the non-stretchy one. So let's get started. I'm gonna bring the character back in. I have uh, this girl character as an illustrator file and I'll bring it as a composition retain layer size. This is important and then open. Here in After Effects we get the composition. Uh, I'm gonna double click on this and also we get a folder with all the layers that we have created in Illustrator. As you see, they're all named in the right way um, and they are brought in with the same naming convention that we used in Illustrator and that's very important to do. Here in the composition we have uh, the same layers again. I'm gonna change the composition background color to something brighter so we can see different elements here. In this document I created few steps to follow for creating this rig. Okay, you have to have this character created in Illustrator and you have to have them named properly. Now in After Effects we have to go over these steps and let's start with the first one which is creating precoms. I've created the forearms and upper arms and also for the legs, thighs and calves separate in Illustrator because I want to use the same character for the other type of the rig. However, for the stretchy one, we need them in one piece. Both arms and both legs, they have to be together. Therefore, I'm going to create precomps of these two separate pieces. I'll call this right arm. And something you notice when you create a precomposition is that anchor point moves to the center of the project window. We need to change this, which is uh, the second step is to set the region of interest. Double click on this precomp and then you select the region of interest icon. You draw a selection around it and then we're gonna go to crop it to this composition. If I unshy this layer, when we do uh, set the region of interest, new composition we create jumps to the center of the window, so we have to bring this back first. I'm gonna repeat the same process for the other arm and both legs. solo also the pivot point. Now what are pivot point? We didn't talk about this. Pivot point are those points in the body where rotation happens. Okay, as you see elbow, wrist, shoulder, hips and the neck. We have also one here. We have for the knees and uh, ankles. Also on the base of the head with the pin push tool. Set one two and three. Next in the layer we're gonna go to the deforms and we're going to name those. This is going to be the right wrist and this is going to be the right elbow and the third one is going to be right shoulder. 
select three of those and create bones okay so next we have naming and parenting bones the parenting is like the parent-child relationship we um, need to parent the wrist to the elbow and the elbow to the shoulder because when we move the shoulder we need the elbow and the wrist to follow so the wrist goes to the elbow and the elbow goes to the shoulder so if we have to rotate the shoulder everything rotates around but the next step we create controllers okay controllers have to be created from the point where we are going to control them and that's uh, at the wrist point for the feet is going to be the ankle so here with the wrist layer selected i can go to the duke window and i can create a controller and the last step is to create the eye key the order is going to be the shoulder the elbow the wrist and then the controller so we're selecting the shoulder hold down command or control in pc select the elbow and then the wrist and then the controller and then we're going to create the eye key which is right here in the duke window and then we're going to leave it at the default setting so just click the i key and what happens here in the layers palette we get this fx element right next to each of those layers if i grab this controller uh, you see i got a stretchy arm so i'm gonna bring this pivot layer all on top and also i'm gonna lock this one so i don't move things around and then i'm gonna grab all the layers that have to do with this arm with the right arm and i'm going to color code them so it will be easier for us to read the timeline i'm gonna hide those bones i don't want to see those and i'm going to also select this arm and to uh, lock these we need to uh, shy them all we need to keep in the timeline is the controller and the hand so so far i can move this arm but the hand is not following and we need the hand to go with it what we do next is i'm just gonna go close here so i'm gonna grab the pan behind tool and i'm gonna move this anchor point right on top of this pivot point i have already for it and the next one is I'm going to parent the hand to follow the wrist controller. So now when I get the controller moving, the hand follows. I'm going to repeat the same steps for the other arm. Next we're going to create the legs, I'm going to grab this right leg and then with this layer selected, click on the pivot points, we're going to name those with all these selected we're creating bones we're going to parent bones the ankle is parented to the knee and the knee is parented to the hip so now we can rotate around the hip and the ankle and the knee follows okay then next we're going to create a controller by selecting first right ankle bone 
and then creating a controller which um, is created on top of the whole layer, so bones here. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select them in the right order from the topmost bone to the last one and then the last ever, the controller, and create the I key. So holding down command or control on PC, you select the right hip, then right knee, right ankle, and then the controller for this. And I key. And we're going to create the same, we're going to leave it to the default, same system. So now if I grab this controller, I get this uh, stretchy leg. As you see, the bending is not in the right direction. There is a way to control this. Since these are effects, we can go to the effects palette right here. If you're not seeing the effects palette, you need to go to the workspace and bring this up we can change the direction by going and clicking on this clockwise. So now you can see that the, the bending is in the right direction. Also, there is this stretching property that if you uncheck this, then you don't get a stretch. We're going to select all the pieces for the leg. We also have um, the shoe and we're going to color code this. I'm going to use blue. Then we're going to the shoe layer to change the anchor point from where the rotation happens, which is somewhere right here. The last thing I need to do is I have to parent this right to the controller. And I'm going to bring the controller above the shoe in the layer stack so I can see it here. So now when I get this controller moving around, the shoe goes with it. Okay, then uh, we're going to do some cleaning here. Those bones, we don't have to see them. We can also lock them. The right leg is going to be locked too. And then we can shy those layers. All we need to have control on is the ankle and the shoe. Okay, now we're going to repeat the same steps for the other leg. So right now I have done arms and legs. Now let's go ahead for uh, doing the body. Again, the process is the same. We don't need to create a pre-comb here because we have the body made in Illustrator in one piece. If I had many pieces made in Illustrator, I would have pre-combed them first. I'm selecting the pins here and I'm starting from the top. And um, it doesn't matter actually the order here. Then we're going to go here to the layer and name them properly. I'm actually going to create one more for the hip. I'm going to select all of them and then create bones. Now, all we have to do is to parent them in a way that everything is going to be moved from this hip area. I'm going to parent the base of the head to the shoulder and both of the shoulders to the center shoulder, the shoulder to the spine. 
from the spine to the hip and those sides of the hips to the center hip. So starting with left hip body here goes to the hip, right hip body goes to the hip, the spine goes to the hip, left shoulder to the shoulder, right shoulder to the shoulder, the shoulder here goes to the spine and the base of the head goes to the shoulder. So what we got now is that you can move the whole body from the hip bone. Next is I'm going to connect first the head to the body. And the process how we do this is the same as we do hands and feet to the arms and legs. I'm going to solo the head. The layer has the anchor point in the center. We have to bring it down to the base where the rotation should happen. Next, I have to parent this. I'm not going to create any bone for the head. I'll just parent it to the base of the head that I have created here from the body. So I want the head to follow the body from this point. So now what I got here is if I select the hip layer, I can move the whole thing. I can select the, this one and move it around. I can, I can select it from here and also I can get the, this base of the head and move it. You have to rotate the head with it so it goes like this. We have not much left to do actually, we're almost done. We're simply going to parent the arms and legs in the body. So first I'm going to unsolo those so I can see the whole body and then I'm going to start with this arm and bring in the bones. This right shoulder bone that we created earlier is going to be parented to the right shoulder of the body. Okay, so if we select the pelvis now, you see the arm goes with it. Bring those up a bit. Left shoulder layer parented to the left shoulder of the body and lock it back again. I'm gonna have the left hip layer parented to the left hip of the body and lock it back again. And the right hip here and parent it to the right hip for the body. Lock it back again and shy the whole thing. So now if I select the hip, I can move the whole body. Now, depending on your character, you're probably gonna need to have more rigging done. Like in my character, when I move this leg, as you see, uh, naturally we expect this dress to move with the leg. So there are ways that after you have finished the rig, you can uh, continue work on this. And one thing you can do about this is that you can create a bone on the dress and a bone right here on the leg and we can connect those together. So if I go back to the body layer here and I grab puppet tool, set a, a pin here. If I go inside, I'm gonna call it left corner dress. Okay, and then from here I'm gonna create a bone. Next I will unlock the left leg, I'll solo it, and I'll solo also the body. So with left leg selected I'm gonna go and set a pin. Then in the deformation nodes here I'm gonna call it the left dress corner leg then I'm gonna create a bone and this is going to be parented to the left hip okay so now we have this bone parented to the left hip and the left corner dress this is going to be parented to this one so the dress is gonna follow the leg so now we see that we get the deformation we want. I went on and I did some cleaning in the timeline. 
I hit lock and shy layers that I'm not going to animate and all I have here are the arms color coded in yellow, legs color coded in blue, body in red and head in green. The last thing I need to do about my character is rigging the shoes. Now depending on the type of the shoe you have for your character, things that need to be considered is that how is this foot gonna bend. In my case the character has a high heel shoe which is a bit more difficult than a character that has just flat shoe. So what I did for my character in Illustrator, first of all I created an opening between this area of the shoe and the high heel. The reason why is that I want this heel of the shoe to follow the ankle while we get the appropriate bending for the first portion of the foot. So the process is going to be the same. We're going to create one pin at the ankle, one at the pole of the foot and one at the toe. And then we're going to create bones out of these pins, which are going to be parented to each other. The toe parented to the ball of the foot and ball of the foot to the ankle. And the ankle is going to be parented to the shoe, which anchor point is right at this point. Okay, let me show you how I did the rigging for this shoe to the other one. I'm going to select left shoe, then click on the puppet pin tool and I'm going to set pins, one in the ankle, one in the ball of the foot, and one at the toes. Puppet Pin Tool has those properties up here, Mesh, Expansion, and Triangles. You can increase the number of triangles to get more clear deformations, and a good number here would be uh, 400 something to 500. However, keep in mind that this takes a lot of time from the render time. Going to the layer of the shoe and selecting those deformers. And selecting them all, we create bones. Then parent the toe to the ball of the foot and the ball of the foot to the left ankle the left ankle to the left shoe. So now what we get is if we select the shoe we can rotate the shoe around then we can also rotate the ball of the foot. One more bone I can create here to make the foot stick in the ground correctly would be to have another bone which then you can parent it to the ankle. This is the end of my tutorial and this is my bird. <laughs> I hope you liked it and have fun with it.